Welcome everyone. I'm Veronica Escobar, your Congresswoman, and I'm so proud to represent our community, El Paso, Congressional District 16 in the House of Representatives. First, I'd like to start off by saying thank you to all of you for joining this event. Attending one of our nation's service academies is a tremendous privilege. And as your representative, I'm honored to be able to nominate El Pasoans each year to become leaders for our country. It is one of my great responsibilities as a member of Congress, and there's nothing I enjoy more than seeing El Pasoans represented at these institutions and on a path to serving in leadership positions in our country's armed services. These prestigious institutions will prepare you and give you the skills needed to become outstanding officers in service of our nation. I hope to send those who represent the best El Paso has to offer, and I'm so glad that at your age, your interests include public service and the commitment of your talents to our nation and its people. I want to thank each of our panelists who join us from the four service academies that require congressional nominations to attend. Our panelists today are Major Stephen Gilbert, Southwest Regional Commander, West Point Academy, joined by Mr. Dave Powell. Second Lieutenant David Thacker, U.S. Air Force Academy Admissions, Region 3 Representative, joined by Colonel Mariano Campos. Benjamin Lebrun, Office of Admissions, Naval Academy Representative. And CDR Keith Watson, Assistant Director of Admissions and Diversity Admissions Officer, Merchant Marine Academy. Thank you to each one of our panelists for taking the time today to answer questions from these interested students. I greatly appreciate your efforts and I want to thank all of you for your service to our country. And thank you again to our attendees for joining today. I hope your interest solidifies as you begin to apply with the service academies and for a con congressional nomination with my office. With that, let's go ahead and get this event started. I'll now turn it over to Jesse Villarreal from my office, who will be moderating today's event. Okay, so with that, we are going to go ahead get it, go ahead and get started. So just a little bit about me, uh, Jesse Villarreal. I am a former Marine. Um, I joined the office in May, and I am in charge of helping facilitate uh, the congressional nominations. I'm very excited um, to do this, to host this with you guys, and of course to meet all of the panelists. And I continue to look forward uh, to working with you all. Super excited. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Mr. Uh, Dave Powell, since Major Gilbert isn't on, do you, would you mind sharing your screen, please? Well, I don't have the briefing up. It'll take me a minute. Can we move perhaps to someone else? Or uh, can sure. you, do you have the slides? Can you show them from your computer? Yes, just one. Okay. That would probably be the quickest thing to do. Okay, I'll go ahead and pull it up here. Okay. Okay, um, whoever's attending, thank you for participating in uh, this event and hopefully it is very informative to you. Obviously I'm not Major Steve Gilbert, hopefully he'll be able to join us um, as we progress. Next slide, please. As you can see, a, a number of prominent people have graduated from the United States Military Academy at West Point, uh, most notably uh, General Douglas MacArthur and most recently, uh, Lieutenant, uh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant General Naja West, who was my classmate, class of 80 to the select few, and Mr. Alex Gorski, CEO of Johnson & Johnson, also a member of the select few. Next, please. This will give you an idea of the majors available at West Point. A number of uh, candidates always ask, uh, what can I study? You can see right there, it's a broad, pretty broad list. Um, and this differs tremendously from when I attended West Point when we actually did not have majors. We only had areas of concentration and everybody graduated with a Bachelor of Science pretty much focused on engineering. But again, this gives you an idea of a broad array of majors available to those who attend West Point. It is truly a top-notch university with a, a number of majors um, that are available at other schools. So if you come to West Point, you're just not going to be an engineer. Next, please. 
this slide and, and the next one will give you an idea of, of um, life as a cadet at West Point. You'll see he'll start off as a freshman. We call them plebes. Six-week basic training, not as hard as it used to be in some respects and then harder in other respects. Much more focused now on the real world stuff, I think. A lot less of the mentorship that went on. I see, I see Lieutenant Thacker there laughing about these barracks. We call our sophomores yearlings. Your sophomore year, you'll actually pick up your academic major and your military training will be focused more on unit level, uh, small unit level tactics. You'll also have an opportunity that summer to participate in individual advanced development. Next slide. Next, please. And your junior year and, and your, your senior year, we'll call them Cal and first year respectively. Now, these are the years where you primarily um, start developing your, your potential as a leader. Uh, generally speaking, your freshman and sophomore years, uh, your freshman year, obviously you're not leading, you are a follower. Your sophomore year, you, you may be TDL as a squad leader, but as a, as a junior, I'm sorry, as a team leader, but as a junior, you'll at least be a squad leader. You'll get an opportunity to participate in a summer detail leading uh, freshman uh, or maybe even sophomores in their summer camp. And this is, this is the year when most cadets will go off and do a military leadership type school. You can do that either your first year, your Cal year, but most will go to a uh, airborne school, air assault school or something like that uh, at the conclusion of their sophomore year going into their Cal year. As a, as a Cal or junior, you'll also have an increasing number of privileges and they will culminate as uh, with the pr privileges that you get as a firstie when you'll actually be leading a number of cadets in your company as either a platoon leader, platoon sergeant, or company commander, first sergeant, and a host of other positions of leadership and staff positions. You get an idea of all the military schools that cadets at West Point are able to go to. And some of those are, are pretty neat and, and relatively recent. I might uh, point out that um, the Sapper Leader course, I've had a couple of my ex-ROTC, high school ROTC cadets uh, complete the Sapper course. It is not an easy course at all. And then you've got some really interesting ones here, French Commando, Brazilian Mountaineering, et cetera. I might also add, and this may come up in a, in a later slide, um, all of the academies give cadets an opportunity to to travel abroad. And it could be as short as a two week stint during the summer or even a semester abroad during an academic year. And that generally starts in your, with the summer between your first year and uh, junior year and during uh, your first year academic year. Next please. Get an idea of the opportunities to travel abroad right there. Just let everybody look at that slide for a minute. Note, it says four military schools. So in addition to our actually sending uh, West Point cadets abroad to four military schools, West Point also has a number of foreign cadets as do the other military academies. So that further enhances the, uh, the opportunity to, to learn from our foreign partners. And another thing that's fairly recent uh, at the Military Academy at West Point is the opportunity to take a, a, a summer academic program. Now, some of those are just at West Point where cadets are going to try to take a, a class to get ahead, but there are also opportunities with industry and abroad. Next, please. And now one of our favorite slides, physical development at West Point. Give everybody the opportunity to look at that. And yes, every cadet, regardless of your sex or gender, will take boxing. You'll also take military movements, which is sort of like a glorified gymnastics class. 
And of course, you'll get a chance to take an Army fitness test right now. It is uh, the APFT, although cadets are also taking the ACFT. But the fun stuff, the really fun stuff is reserved until your sophomore year. And that is when you get to take survival swimming, which includes the leap or step off of the 10 meter board, 10 meter platform in full uniform. And last but not least, everybody's favorite, the indoor obstacle course. And I encourage every single candidate to go on YouTube and just look at um, the presentations of the indoor obstacle course. You'll have everybody from super fit uh, cadets trying to set records to, and believe it or not, the commandant of cadets going up against the superintendent of West Point, which occurred a couple of years ago. You'll continue to take the an Army physical fitness test throughout your duration at West Point, and you'll take the obstacle course again as a, as a cow. And things kind of slack off a little bit as a first year when you get to take what's called a lifetime sport, um, which gives you an opportunity to learn something that you can um, and practice something that you can carry with you uh, during your military career. Next, please. Well, some of this stuff here is applicable to all the other academies right here. See, this is what we're looking for, a well-rounded candidate, not just someone who excels ac academically, we're looking for candidates who excel academically, but also excel in other areas, be it school extracurricular acti activities, be it co-curricular activities, be it out of school activities, volunteerism, et cetera. And every cadet, every candidate has to be reasonably physically fit as noted by every candidate taking the candidate fitness assessment. Now, a lot of candidates will ask me, well, do I have to play a sport? Or they're concerned because they haven't played a sport that it's going to disadvantage them when it comes to being admitted to a military academy. And to them, I say, where at, while most candidates do participate in athletics, and in fact, most candidates excel in athletics, it's really not a disadvantage. What West Point's looking for, again, is a well-rounded, young man or young woman, someone who does a broad array of activities. Most, yes, do do a sport, but to be quite frank, many at least in the El Paso area don't, and they get into West Point. So don't get discouraged if you're out there and you're not playing a sport right now. Just get involved and show that you can not only excel in the classroom, but you can excel in the classroom while having all these other demands. This is an opportunity for me to also say, candidates, you need to not overlook the candidate fitness assessment to include those of you who are top-notch athletes in high school. There are events on that test, things that you don't routinely do. And every year I see candidates who are athletes, varsity letter winners, state qualifiers, who have an issue with one component of the test because they don't practice it. Please, if you are a candidate, get out there, practice the candidate fitness assessment. Your volunteer admissions representatives are here to advise you, to guide you on how to, how to take a diagnostic test. We can coordinate with your school officials if need be, or in some cases, even administer a CFA to you. And then the last but not least on this slide, if you have not taken your SAT or ACT, please sign, sign up for it as soon as possible. Next, please. That concludes the briefing slides that I have, and I'll just let my counterparts speak now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul. And I would like to remind everybody, all the attendees, that if you do have a question, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. And um, we will do also a, a more robust Q&A at the end um, of all the presentations. So if next, if we could have Mr. Ben Lebrun from the Naval Academy. All right. Let me just get my screen shared here. 
All right, I hope everybody can see that. Oh, no, we're not quite there yet. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? My name is Ben Lebrun. Uh, I am a member of the USNA admissions team. I specifically work in nominations and appointments. So a big part of my job is making sure that fine folks like yourselves can receive nominations to attend our prestigious academy. Uh, a little bit about myself. I unfortunately was not privileged to attend the United States Naval Academy. I, in fact, enlisted in the United States Navy, uh, but I'm very proud to work here. Uh, part of what got me interested in actually coming here to the Naval Academy was serving under several officers while I was in the Navy. Uh, they were uniformly some of the best officers I ever served under. So I, I had to be a part of the mix. I had to see you know, how the, the magic worked to turn these folks into superior officers in our fleet. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to get into our presentation. Just to let you know, I've cut this down quite a bit uh, just to save time, but quite a bit of the, you know, the basic eligibility in terms is going to be the same from uh, academy to academy. So, you know, we're, we're only really focusing on the USNA specific stuff. So anyway, so the US Naval Academy is located between Baltimore and Washington, DC. So we're kind of sandwiched right there in the middle. Uh, we're right off the Severn River. We have a beautiful view of the sun every morning as it rises over. Uh, it's a very lovely campus. It's also sort of a world unto its own. A lot of uh, service academies are very large, expansive. Uh, ours is very contained, right? It's big, but like it has a lot of stuff packed into it as well. Um, as you can see from the slide, we have a lot of different things available for us. Uh, you know, with, yes, we, we have an ice rink. Yes, we have several pools. Yes, we have multiple different weightlifting centers. Uh, I make use of one almost every day while I'm at work, right? We have a lot of stuff here. And in that regard, it's kind of a benefit in, you know, this, the, the next normal we have of uh, a post-COVID world where, you know, sometimes we have to kind of stay in one place. You're not going to be bored here. We have a lot of stuff going on for you. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a big step up from being stuck in a room or, you know, stuck in a dorm or something like that, uh, you know, during a COVID lockdown. Additionally, we have a lot to study while you're here. So these are 26 majors. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these are STEM majors. We are a STEM school. And what I mean by that is, is we focus on the things that drive a modern military, and that is engineering, oceanography, physics, cyber ops, all kinds of really awesome disciplines, right? And we have almost every single one of these, you know, like engineering and weapons, have a building designated specifically for them in which you know, everybody kind of lives under one roof, learns from each other, uh, piggybacks off each other's ideas, and, you know, really conducts some awesome novel research. Uh, you know, if you guys ever get a chance to come out here for a Canada visit, I highly recommend you look at one of our newest locations, Hopper Hall, on the uh, uh, back side of the campus, uh, right near the wooden bridges. Really awesome stuff in there. We have a hypersonic wind tunnel. I mean, just, I, I can't, gush enough about how awesome some of the stuff we have here is. Uh, but even as a STEM school, we do have humanities and social sciences as well. Seems a little limited, but a lot of things are stored under those roofs. Poli sci majors, history majors, they're not just studying, you know, uh, one kind of history. They're studying all kinds of different th things. They're focusing on different regions, right? So there's, you know, these are tents under which a lot of other things exist. I also want to hit on something else, too, that you might not hear tonight, which is that when you pick a major here, we're not telling you you have to pick this if you want to be this. We have helicopter pilots who are physicists. We had a CNO who studied English, right? And for those of you who don't know, the CNO is the top officer in the United States Navy, right? So you're not limited by the major you pick. You can pick what you're interested in, what you want to do. Right. And if you apply yourself to it, you can be successful in not only that, but in any career field you should choose in the Navy. Right. So don't feel like you have to pick the best major. All the majors are great. They're all run by really awesome professors. And a little bit more about that. Oh, and here are some language minors as well. These do have to be taken with one of these additional majors. But if you want to learn some additional language skills and challenge yourself a little bit, you have that option available to you. So about the professors. So we have an eight to one student ratio, which means your class size on average is going to be not much more than 12 to 15 people and generally not less than six. So it's going to be real small, tight knit groups. You're going to have a much more one to one face time with your professor. Uh, we have a one to one military to civilian ratio, which means a lot of the people you're going to be learning from are active duty military. These are people who 
have been out in the fleet. They've come back. They have a lot of experiences to share. They have a lot of stories. They have a lot of mentorship to give you. They have, you know, a chance to kind of show you what you'll be doing when you get out. And many of them are former grads themselves. So they can kind of guide you through the, the convoluted process of, you know, finishing college, being the best midshipman you can be, right? You know, they're a really great resource. Additionally, it means that you will have opportunities for supplemental instruction. I mentioned before, we're a STEM school, which means math. I'm not particularly very good at math, but it's okay. You don't have to be great at math. You just have to be able to apply yourself and do well. If you're struggling with a particular math, calculus one always gets everybody, right? You don't have to sit there and beat your head against a brick wall and think, well, I'll never get this. We have extra instruction, supplementary instruction. We can bend it around your uh, class schedule so that you can get the help you need. We're not going to leave you to, to, to sink or swim. We want to give you everything you need in order to succeed here at the Naval Academy. With that in mind, you're not going to pay anything to come here, right? If you apply yourself and you get into the Naval Academy, that's it. You're going to receive all your uniforms. You're going to receive a laptop computer, right? Any books, anything else you need to be the best student you can be, we're going to give that to you, right? That's not something that you're going, you know, you're not going to have to pick up a second job. You're not going to have to struggle like so many other of your you know, peers might when they go to a traditional four-year school, right? You're going to have all that as soon as you get there, right? And you'll have the ability to focus purely on your studies and, you know, the other responsibilities of the midshipmen. So, I, you know, don't feel like you have to, sorry about that. <laughs> don't feel like you have to uh, put any kind of emphasis on something other than your academics. So this is the service assignment for the most recent class, the class that graduated. I touch on this only to say that you can see that there's a lot of different options for people to go into, right? Now we have surface warfare, right? Which is what this SWO thing is right here. You, you know, followed by submarines, SEALs, flight school, all these, you know, seems like a lot of uh, different stuff Right. But in reality, what you're looking at is most folks are going to be going into the surface warfare community that's on ships. Right. And the rest are going to be going either into the Marine Corps or they're going to become a pilot. Right. But with that, we also have some staff corps options, which means, you know, some things that you know, maybe you don't hear so much about, but are really awesome. I highly recommend for those of you who are interested, take a look at usna.edu slash admissions for oceanography. Right. It's an up and coming discipline for those of you who are interested, especially in something like climate science. It has a lot to offer. Now, physical qualifications. Uh, this is the same for most of the academies. I touch on this only to say, please, if you're not already working to get yourself in shape, please do so now. Right. We have so many great candidates, so many absolutely outstanding students every year who come to us and are sunk by the CFA. On its face, it may not seem very difficult until you're there, until you're doing those push-ups, until you're doing those sit-ups, until you're running that mile, and suddenly go, oh no, I should have prepared. So please, don't do that to yourself. If you're gonna work this hard to come to the Naval Academy, please work just that little bit extra, you know, to get it physically in shape, right? You don't, you know, you don't have to be a bodybuilder, you don't have to be able to lift a Volvo over your head, but please, put in the effort, it, it really will pay dividends down the line. And finally, I just wanna give you some basic advice for admissions. Like I said, we are a STEM school, which means math and science is gonna be a big part of your curriculum. Even if you're going for English or history or political science, you are going to have to study some math. You're gonna to have to study some science. If you're gonna be an officer in the Navy or Marine Corps, you have to understand how the equipment that you're going to be using every single day works. So if you aren't taking an advanced math now, I highly recommend you do so. Um, if you are taking a advanced math, please make sure that it is properly recorded and that that way we can make sure it's validated when you get here. Same if you're, if you're taking any kind of science. If you're taking one, please make sure it's one with a lab component. We wanna make sure you can not only know the science, but you can do the science. Uh, we don't have a minimum GPA, right? So that doesn't mean if you have 1.5, well, it doesn't matter. 
it means that we're not going to prevent you from applying if your GPA is, you know, below a 3.5, which is what it normally is uh, for an applicant. Uh, but it means too that, you know, understand that GPA is going to be factored in, but it's not going to be the only thing we look at. Uh, same goes for SATs. We don't have a minimum for SATs or ACTs, but that doesn't mean, well, if you, you know, if you bomb them, don't worry about it. What we do here is we super score, which means if you have a score, you know, say you're reading, you get a 200, right? You're not satisfied with that score. We invite you to take it as many times as you feel you need to take it till you get the score you need. Then what you can do, submit that to us. That's going to be your best score, right? We're only going to look at your highest score. The other ones, it's as if they never existed. So continue to apply yourself and continue doing the SAT until you get the score you're most satisfied with. Finally, any kind of advanced courses while you're in high school uh, or if you're you know, in your first semester or so of college, any advanced courses, we absolutely encourage that. That looks awesome on your application. Something we really like to see that somebody's going out to get the extra challenge, do that extra work. And you know, they're not, they're not somebody who's just content to, you know, do the basic. But that doesn't mean that if you don't have them, you know, it's 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 gonna sink your application. It just means that you know we encourage you to get those. And then finally, well-rounded. This is a deceptive term, but I'm gonna explain what it means is you're not just, you know, you're not a member of 500 different extracurricular activities. You're not you know, the captain of 700 teams, right? That's not necessarily what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody who is involved in a few things, but involved deeply. It's a quality over quantity sort of thing. And what we want to see too, is if you're not the captain of something, you know, if the football team, for example, that's okay. But we want to know is, would one of your coaches say, this person is a, a born leader. I wish I had a spot on my team to make them captain. Unfortunately, I don't but they come out every single day. They do their absolute best. They encourage their teammates, right? Something like that, right? And that regards any extracurricular you're in. You know, we want the person who recommends you for this to be able to say, this person gives it their all. I heartily recommend them, <laughs> right? They, you know, they really are a quality person, right? And then finally, we also want to see that you're involved in not just athletic activities, but also, uh, you know, of various other extracurriculars, clubs, that sort of thing. Um, like the other service academies, everybody here is a student athlete, right? You don't have to be on a varsity team, um, but there will be a sport for you. We have many different sports and whatnot. I don't know that if I touched on that earlier, but we don't necessarily need you to be, you know, in one of the big sports that everybody knows about, right? Find something that, you know, is athletic that you're good at, apply that and I'm sure we have a spot for you when you get here to the Naval Academy. Anyway, here's our socials. Uh, you can find us at Facebook. I especially advise you go look there. I also advise that you look at usna.edu slash admissions. Everything you need to know about the admissions process is there. And if it isn't, we have an inquiry link. Put your info into that. Either myself or somebody else will get back to you and make sure that we answer your question or route it to somebody who can. Finally, for nominations purposes, which is kind of what we're all here for tonight, we have a drop down list of every single nomination for which you are, you could be eligible and exactly how to get it. I highly advise you check those links out. Uh, for those of you who are interested in asking us some more questions after the event, I'll put my info in the chat. But other than that, folks, I really appreciate your time tonight. and I hope to see you all, all in the fleet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Delivera. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, next, we have Commander Keith Watson from the Merchant Marine Academy. You're muted, Commander. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present to you the United States Merchant Marine Academy. I am always excited when I have the opportunity to talk about my academy. I am the Assistant Director of Missions and Diversity Officer at the Academy. So what that means to you is that I am one of the individuals that make the final decision on who will get the appointment to, our, to attend our academy. So before I start my slide, let me tell you some certain things about us because we are slightly different. 
First of all, we do not fall under the Department of Defense. We fall under the Department of Transportation. But every student that attend our academy can have an opportunity to not only be an officer in the maritime industry, but also to be an officer in any branch of the military. We are the only service academy that you can come to, attend and graduate and become an officer in any branch of the service you want to. So even though we are a maritime academy, some students ask me, well, can I be a pilot? The answer is yes. Can I be a, a, a Marine? The answer is yes. Can I go in the Air Force? Can I go in the Coast Guard by attending the Merchant Marine Academy? Once again, the answer is yes. So I'm gonna start this slide, but I want you to do me a favor before I start this slide. As I go through this slide, I want each and every last one of you to dream a little bit. Don't just listen to my voice because if you do that, you might fall asleep. Don't just look at the slide. I want you to dream a bit when you go through that slide and ask yourself, how would I fit in that environment? Or would I work in that environment? That's very important. So let me take the time to uh, share my screen. Can anyone, everyone see that? No, not yet, Commander. Not yet, uh-oh. Uh, ah, here we go. Oops. Uh, you might have to come back. My computer's acting up. Bear with me. Okay, can everybody see that now? Yes. All right, fantastic. So I'm gonna go through this slide real quickly, uh, but please, uh, like I said, dream as I go through. First of all, this is our academy, United States Merchant Marine Academy. We are located in a place called Kings Point, New York. We're just 16 miles outside of Manhattan. So what is our mission? Our mission is to educate and graduate leaders of exemplary character who are inspired to serve the national security, merchant, uh, marine transportation, and economic needs of the United States as licensed merchant marine officers and commissioned officers of the armed forces. Here want a little history about us. The Merchant Marine Act in 1936 established the United States Merchant Marine Cadet Corps. And in 1942, the Academy's permanent site in Kings Point, New York was acquired. On September 30th, 1943, we were dedicated by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. In World War II, shipboard training continued in 142 midshipmen gave their lives. And something we're really proud of, in 1974, we became the first service uh, academy to enroll female students. Next Academy did not do it until 1976. So what do merchant mariners do? First, before I read this, I would like to say to you, the merchant marines is the most important thing in your life every day of the week. If you stop and think about everything you use, over 95% of the things was made someplace other than America. That cell phone you talk on, the family's car, the TV you look at, almost everything we use is made someplace else. So that prompts the question, how does it get to America? Ships. The merchant marines, the maritime industry. The U.S. merchant marine consists of privately owned U.S. registered merchant ships. We provide waterborne transportation for passengers and cargo, moving in domestic and international commerce. And in time of war or national emergency, the U.S. merchant marine serves as the fourth arm of defense. I'm not going to read every bullet point here, but this is just a list of some of the industries that our graduates uh, can uh, work in upon graduation. 
not only if it's ship, also offshore oil rigging, uh, when we talk about uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, just a few industries that they can work in. So what would a graduate earn? Individuals that go to our school will graduate with a bachelor's of science degree. There will be a commission officer as an ensign in the Navy Reserve or an active duty. And then they will also receive a, a Coast Guard license as a merchant marine officer, third mate, or third assistant engineer. Remember earlier when I said, we're the only service academy that you can go into any branch of the service you desire. So this is how that works. Of course, we're a maritime uh, academy, so we encourage people to become merchant marines. If you decide to become a merchant marine, you must work in the maritime industry for five years. You must maintain your uh, Coast Guard license for six years. The license is actually good only for five years, but we ensure that you Take it before it expires. That's why we say six years. And you must serve in the Navy Reserve for eight years. Oh, don't get excited. It's not eight straight years. If you're in the maritime industry, how that works is that you only do two weeks a year for eight years. Now, I know some of you probably talked to some recruits and you heard reserve. You normally hear one week in a month, two, week out, two weeks out the year. It does not work for that, that way if you graduate from my academy. It's only two weeks a year for eight years, do the math. That's not even a year worth of military service. But for those individuals that some might come to our school, want to go in the maritime industry, but you might learn that the maritime industry is not something you like. Well, that's okay because you have another option. And that option is to become an active duty officer in either branch of the services or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. If you choose that option, you still have to fulfill five years of active duty in any of the armed service. Just give you an example of some of our last class. Just look at this last column here in class of 2020. 58 went into the Navy Reserve on the uh, transportation side of the house, which we refer to deck. And then uh, 69 of them went into the Navy Reserve on the engine side. 33 went active duty Navy. Uh, 17 went active duty Coast Guard, five went active duty Air Force, eight went active duty Army, 14 went active duty uh, Marine Corps, two went into NOAA, 38% of class 2022 uh, went on uh, active duty military. Our school is based on a trimester system. We have a lot of hands-on uh, training. We work with a hands-on training philosophy we have engineering labs, nautical science laboratories, and then C year. Our students spend anywhere between 300 and 365 days traveling the world. The average student sees anywhere between 15 and 20 countries while they're at the academy. And yes, our school is still only four years in turn. That's a lot. Uh, then we have our own vessels. Our, Vessel, the main training vessel at the academy is the King's Pointer. Now our school, we're focused on the maritime industry. So our school is broken into two departments, the uh, Marine Transportation Deck License under that. Now we only have one degree. All the academies only have one degree, but we, they have specialties or disciplines you can pursue. We only have five disciplines. Under the deck license side, you can pursue marine transportation, which focuses on nautical science and maritime business management, or mar uh, maritime logistics and security, which focuses on nautical science, managing complex maritime and uh, intermodal supply chains, or security challenges facing the marine transportation system. Now, on the engine side of the house, you can uh, study marine engineering, which focuses on shipboard engineering operations, Marine engineering systems that's focused on the design of shipboard systems and machinery or marine engineering shipyard management, which focuses on ship uh, management of shipyard and the production and repair of marine vehicles. I'm not going to read every course here, but I wanted everybody to have a snapshot. It was really important for me to talk a bit about this slide. If you can see on both sides of the spectrum, whether it's engineering or transportation, right at the top, you see calculus, you see physics, you see engineering, and you see chemistry. The reason why I'm pointing this out, great percentage of the people 
that don't receive an appointment to go to the academy simply was not competitive enough. So what do I mean about that? We want our students to at least have three, but we look for recalc calculus. We look for physics. We look for chemistry. It's very important that you know that you need those courses so you can talk to your counselors. And so you can ensure that you get that experience that you need in high school. So when you transition and you, if you're one of the fortunate ones to receive the appointment, then you will be familiar. Now, if you do not have it, that does not mean you won't get an appointment, but it benefits you to be familiar with those courses. So if you don't have it and you have an opportunity to talk to your counselor and adjust your current courses, please do so. This year, I'm not gonna talk in depth about it. It's just that our students go to see at different times during the year. Remember I said they spend a whole year traveling the world, but they don't do that all at once. They go out to see for four months in between the freshman and sophomore year, and then they go back out to see again for eight months between the junior and senior year. And there's different splits. There's an A split, there's a B split, and there's a C split. Now here's C year. C year is something that really differentiates us from all the other academies, but it's not just the travel. What's really special about C year is what we're actually doing is sending you out in the real world to work with and learn with individuals that's doing the job that you're in school trying to learn. While in C year, you're actually getting paid. So now when you graduate from our school, you're not just a college graduate, you're a college graduate with a year's worth of paid experience. That's why for those individuals that actually go into the maritime industry, the average starting salary for their first job is between 85 and $145,000 a year. Wow, I know you agree that that is outstanding for your first job out of college. We do have a regimental program. I'm gonna slide through these next slides pretty quickly. But while you're at the academy, you will wear a naval uniform. During that time at the academy, we will focus on developing followership and leadership skills. We emphasize respect, honor, service, and courage. The first classmen under the supervision of the academy's commandant of midshipmen exercise command of the regiment. It's a long day. Reveille at 6 a.m. in the morning, and the day doesn't end until like 10 o'clock at night. We are division three sports. For men, we have baseball, basketball, cross country, football, lacrosse, soccer, swimming and diving, track and field and wrestling. And for women, we have basketball, cross and country, lacrosse, swimming and diving, track and field, volleyball and soccer. And we have a host of club sports. They are not all listed here, but I do have ice hockey, ice hockey rugby and water polo, just to name a few. Of course, we're a maritime program. We have one of the best waterfront programs in the country. At the waterfront, we have capital vesting, offshore sailing, power squadron, keel boats, dinghy, and rowing. Now, I want you to understand that waterfront programs are not officially NCAA sports at any college in the country, but they do operate like NCAA sports. So even though all the other sports are Division One, I mean, Division Three sports at our school, our selling programs are division one sport. And the one thing that I'm really excited about about the waterfront programs that a lot of people that participate on these teams have never sailed before in their life and they get out there and they become champions. That's something to be excited about. And for those individuals that have musician talent, I'm a saxophonist. The Merchant Marine Academy is the only academy that our band is completely compiled of students at the academy. During the time at the academy, we participate in an inaugural parades when they exist, St. Patrick's Day, Macy Day, Thanksgiving parade, Cotton Bowl, and other types of events, just to name a few. Just a little bit about the eligibility, you must be a US citizen, you must be between the age of 17 and 24, you must be in good moral character, and you must meet the uh, physical security suitability and character requirements necessary to become a commissioned 
uh, officer in the U.S. Navy Reserve or any other branch of the military. And this is what uh, for our qualification, we're already talking about academic, you must be physically qualified, you must be medically qualified, and you must receive a nomination from a senator or a congressperson. And when it comes to the SAT, the SAT, we look at it from a middle of the range uh, process. So for an SAT, we like our students between um, reading to be between 30 and 34 and in math between 600 and 660. On an SAT, we like for you to be in between uh, 25 and 31 in English and math, 26, 29. We do super score as well. And what that really means is that we'll take the highest score uh, in any of these areas for any test. So if your highest math score is from the SAT, we'll use that. If your highest reading score is from the ACT, we'll use that. And so this is the evaluation. I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to let the next uh, representative speak. So in a nutshell, 75% of our evaluation is based on your academics. We review your transcripts, your SAT, your high school class rank. And then the other half, 25%, is based on your leadership. And we assess that by uh, looking at school official evaluation. We ask you to get an evaluation from the school counselor your science teacher, your English teacher, and your math teacher. We look at your athletic participation. But when we look at your athletic participation, we're not only looking at the fact that you're an athlete. We're looking to see if you had any leadership uh, uh, position. Maybe you were a captain on the team or some other leadership position. And then we look at your non-athletic position. Like, for example, you might be in the first chair in the bank. Uh, you might be a class president. Uh, you might be on a student council. All these things show leadership ability. Then last but not least, uh, can and fitness qualification consists of the basketball throw, pull up, shuttle run, modify, sit up, push ups, and one mile run. I will reiterate what was said earlier. The test is basically an easy test. However, do not take it until after you do practice and you know you're going to pass it because you only get one chance to pass this test. So with that said, I'm going to uh, end my presentation at this time. I will answer questions in the chat. I will be available at the end, and I will post my contact information in the chat room as well. As well. Thank you very much for giving me this time. I look forward to speaking to each and every last one. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commander. And um, thank you. I see uh, Miguel Vega had asked a question in chat. And so thank you so much, uh, Second Lieutenant Thacker and uh, Mr. LeBron for answering uh, the questions there. And um, with that, I wanna continue to encourage the attendees who are on um, to go ahead and drop your questions in the chat and myself or the um, panelists will go ahead and answer uh, your questions. So with that, uh, we'll move to Second Lieutenant Thacker who is joined with uh, Colonel Mariano Campos. Awesome, thank you. My slides, you can see my slides? All right, perfect. So United States Air Force Academy, save the best for last. We are the coolest academy, uh, no shade at the other ones, but you know, that is what it is. Uh, so hi, I am Second Lieutenant David Thacker. I graduated from the United States Air Force Academy in 2021, so the most recent class. I'm also now a United States Space Force officer going to cyber training soon. But my first year, I'm assigned to help all of you out. So I am your local academy admissions representative. I'm in Colorado Springs. So if you want to talk to me or want me to talk to you, make sure you put your information in the link I dropped in the chat. So there's our mission. Uh, these slide deck went a little bit long after I saw everyone else's. So we're going to skip over this, but there is a Space Force thing in there. So that's pretty cool. So we focus on a whole person development. I know I skipped that slide, but it's not super important. And along with that, we have uh, this, which is our wind chamber. So we actually, here we have a cadet who is working on our wind chamber, designing aircraft, designing the new leading edge tech that we're gonna use in our aircraft in the future. And we have world-class facilities right there on campus within walking distance of our two dormitories. So we are the number three public college, the number three in aerospace engineering, the number five in undergraduate engineering, computer science is up there. I was a computer science major myself. Um, so we have fantastic academic opportunities if you are academically motivated. And even if you're not, we have these fantastic majors. So uh, we are a STEM school, but we also do love our humanities and social sciences people. So I have friends who are philosophy majors who are now pilots. 
I have friends who are physics majors who are now cyber officers. It doesn't really matter what you do at the academy, you can become anything you want in the aerospace forces. Um, along with that, 50% of our graduating class becomes a pilot. So if you wanna become a pilot, fly fast things or fly slow things, you can watch the news, we have C-17s. Uh, those are Air Force birds that are flying people out and saving lives. You can do that from the academy and the academy is your best bet. <laughs> so athletics, um, we have obviously Air Force Falcon football, the best. We have tons of D1 schools or D1 athletic programs like cross country, uh, tennis, anything you're really interested in we have is a D1 program. And even if you're not, we have a club sport. So me personally, I was on the triathlon team at the academy after doing track and field one year. We also have people who do like diving, which is a separate D1 like sport from the main ones. You can go and do club sport diving or compete as you know a D1 diver if you like. Um, we also have physical fitness tests and aerobic fitness tests. The aerobic fitness test happens indoors if it snows, but it's a mile and a half run. It's really fun. People love it. Uh, we also have the physical fitness test, which is not as bad as the CFA, which everyone else has been talking about. So basic cadet training, uh, the number one thing people will tell you is that it's awful. It is not that bad. I had a lot of fun with it. Most people have a lot of fun with it. So if you're worried about it, you're applying to the academies, but you're not sure because you think basic training is this massive hurdle you're going to have to get over. Everyone gets through it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a blast. You're going to make friends. Um, so in the top left, you see the footprints, which is probably where you've seen all the videos of the Academy happen. People come up and they get in your face and they try to get a rise out of you. Honestly, have a good time and basic. It's a really fun time. So the Academy experience, uh, in the background, you can see the Cadet Chapel, which is absolutely beautiful. We also have individuals who jump out of perfectly good airplanes and parachute down. We are the only place in the country, as far as I'm aware, that your first jump is completely solo. So when you walk outside the aircraft, you parachute on, you're all by yourself and it's exhilarating. We also have an honor code like the other service academies, so we will not lie, steal, or cheat, nor tolerate among us anyone who does. Um, the honor code is really important. If you want to come to any of the academies, you have to be a person of honor. You have to not do any of these things. So start working on that now if that's not you. Um, all the service academies will require you to follow this honor code. So our cadet wing is organized by wing group and squadrons. So you can see all the squadron logos down there. I was in squadron 11 my freshman year. And then after two years, so my junior year, I went to squadron 39, where I was the squadron commander my first year, which is your senior year. So here's those clubs I was talking about. So we have everything from triathlon, which is my heart and soul, to falconry, where you actually get to take care of the Air Force Academy's mascots. There's like four or five falcons that you get to go down and take care of. We have our own radio station that you get to broadcast from to the entirety of Colorado Springs and Denver. So anything you want to do at the Academy, it's right there and they're waiting for you. We also have a sponsor program. So I know I'm an Oregon boy myself. So when I came here, I was pretty far away. For you guys, um, you know, the Academy is pretty close. So maybe you don't have to worry about that. But you get a sponsor family while you're here. They'll take care of you. It's like a home away from home and it's fantastic. I still talk to my sponsor family and I'm about to go over there for dinner soon, so that's pretty fun. So this is a cool slide. Uh, fun fact, I went to Oman my sophomore year. Oman is a little small country in the Middle East, and I got to visit their Air Force Academy and have a great time. And I didn't even take a language. I actually took Japanese my freshman year. I didn't know a lick of Arabic, and they still sent me. Um, you can also go to the other academies. I'm not sure why you would if you went to the best academy. No offense to all the other ones. But you know you can if you would like to. Um, we have summer research. Your sophomore to junior year, you get to go on Ops Air Force, which is where you go to active active duty um, Air Force bases. And so I went to Shaw Air Force Base, which is in South Carolina. I got to see F-16s up close. Got to have them do a 300 foot pass right over my head. It was fantastic. Every cadet gets the opportunity. So these are some of the military applications you get to do with the academy. So you can be cadre for basic training. I was cadre for the cadets that weren't going through basic training, so I was the group commander for them. We also have survival training you get to go through where you get to fire rifles and pistols and have a really great time with that. If you're not into guns, I wasn't before I showed up, but that made me into guns. Um, so we also have basic that training that you can be a part of if you decide to. 
here's all of our air mature opportunities. So like I said, you get to jump out of a perfectly good airplane if you want for like three weeks. Uh, our cadets here have our own satellite program. So we design and build our own satellites and then collaborators like SpaceX will launch them into space for you and you get to go watch it. We have our gliding program. We have a power flight program. If you're into computers like I was, you get to go do some fun hacking stuff. Can't tell you exactly what happens, but you'll find out if you decide to. And also RPAs, which is what that drone picture is. You get to fly the drones that Special Forces uses everywhere across the globe. They're really awesome. Also, here's a picture of Colorado Springs. This is Garden of the Gods. If you love beautiful vistas and you love being in the outdoors and you love doing anything like that, the Academy is a place for you. We're also the youngest service academy, which makes us arguably the coolest. We've only had 63 classes. So if you wanna join the long blue line, come on ahead. We've only graduated 53,669 lieutenants. I think you can add a thousand of that after this year. Hope we have updated this. So we have 35 different career fields. Like I said, 50% of us become pilots, about 10% of us become Space Force, and 10% of us go on to graduate school. In graduate school, if you pick, get picked up a program, it's completely free. So you can go to law school, you can go to medical school, you can go to like a public policy school. A lot of my friends went and are getting their like doctorate and masters in computer science, all paid for by the Air Force. So here are all of our career fields. If any of them interest you, join the Air Force. We have doctors, one of my friends is in nurses. Obviously we have pilots. You can go and become a police officer if you like, or an FBI for the Air Force type. Um, so you've all probably heard of NCIS. We have our own called OSI. Really cool, don't have a cool theme song, but you can definitely just play it in your head if you do that job. Also Space Force, probably the best branch since we're so small and so tight knit. So I'm a cyberspace operator. So I get to look at you know, people trying to do network intrusions into our satellites. We have intelligence officers, space operators. So it was said before that, um, you know, the merchant Marines are the backbone. I don't disagree with that, but everything you do in your day-to-day -day life revolves around space. So if you're on your computer right now, your computer time is synced to GPS. If you go on your phone, you try to go to Walmart or Chick-fil-A or something like that, that happens through our space assets. So the space force is integral to every single part of your life. And every time you pick up your phone, it goes through the satellite. So how to get started, obviously, academyambitions.com. Every service academy has websites. So make sure you check all of them out. Um, make sure you fill out that pre-candidate questionnaire. Every summer, we have something called Summer Seminar, which is where you get to come out and see the academy and get to experience what it's like to be a cadet. So like what everyone else said, uh, academically competitive, physically qualified, medically qualified, be a person of character and have leadership experiences. And obviously we're here for nominations. So make sure you pay attention to the nominations. You can get them from both your senators or your representatives. So we saw the Congresswoman earlier, she's the one who's gonna decide if you get a nomination. Academically competitive, we do super score. Everyone else talked about it. They kind of took the wind out of my sails or airfoils. So the CFA, I went through what you guys are gonna be going through four years ago. The CFA is important. I actually failed the basketball throw my first time around trying to get into West Point. West Point was gracious enough to let me retake it, um, but make sure you practice that. It's like you're hucking a grenade, except the grenade is twice as big as it should be and it doesn't fly very far. So make sure you practice it, it's really important. Also the Dodmerb, I'm not a doctor, so I can't answer any of your medical questions but make sure that you are keeping on top of your physical fitness as well as your overall health. So here's a little slide about all the things you can do to demonstrate character and leadership. At the Academy, we don't suggest that you try and do all of these things. We suggest that you focus on a couple of them. So I focused on National Honor Society. I was a president of National Honor Society. That was basically enough to help show the Academy that I had leadership. So don't try and get as many things as you can, try and get involved in small things. Nominations, obviously, is what we're here for. So again, two U.S. senators, the U.S. representative, or the vice president. Please don't email the vice president. Each of the academies will email him for you if you are qualified for that nomination. So every year, we have about 11,000 applicants. That gets whittled down to about 9,215. At the end of the day, we only admit 1,155. So like all the service academies, we're extremely competitive. Make sure you're staying on top of your GPA and your leadership. We also have preparatory schools. So if you are a prior enlisted or you are enlisted right now and you're on this call, um, we may send you a preparatory school. If you're not physically fit enough or you're not academically fit enough, don't worry. 
you may be able to send you a prep school in which we have about a 90% acceptance rate into the actual academy. Prep schools are fantastic. So again, like everyone else is talking about, you have no tuition costs when you go to the United States Air Force Academy, you have no room board costs. I have a guaranteed career for at least the next eight years, something a lot of civilian institutions can't say. You get a monthly stipend of about a grand each month, and you also get medical and dental coverage, which is really important for me because I break bones pretty easily. So if you're like me, the medical coverage is fantastic. That concludes my presentation. Um, I just want to do one more pitch. ROTC is a fantastic option. If you have not heard of ROTC, make sure that you're looking at that. Um, it's basically like going to the academy, so you get to go to a civilian institution and experience the military through that. Um, so don't get disheartened if the academy doesn't seem like it's something for you. Make sure you're looking at ROTC. Navy has it, as does Army. But of course, Air Force ROTC is the best. Sir, would you like to jump in real quick? Thanks very much. And I'll, I'll just kind of tie up what everybody's saying today, too. Again, uh, everybody's application may be slightly different. Um, if you're part of the Air Force application process, there's checklists you have to go through. Please get those done as quickly as possible, uh, particularly in applying for uh, your nominations. Uh, don't delay. Don't be the person that waits to the last minute. Um, in terms of uh, dreaming, uh, I'm not an Air Force Academy graduate. I'm an Air Force ROTC graduate. I went to Irvine High School, uh, graduated from UTEP. And I got my commission through Air Force ROTC that way and had a nice 28 year, year career that involved uh, dropping bombs out of airplanes and also involvement in uh, information operations and inform information warfare and electronic warfare. So I got to do some of that. Um, I think Lieutenant kind of, and some of you also alluded to it earlier, you have to have a nomination obviously for all the service academies with the exception of the Coast Guard. But one of the realities, and I'm just gonna mention it right here is that Although you get a nomination, it doesn't mean that you will get appointed by the Surface Academy. In other words, you may not get picked even though you have a nomination. And that's why I say dream because that also means don't give up. Just because you may not get picked doesn't mean there may not be other opportunities to achieve that dream. For example, last year we had an applicant who uh, graduated very highly from high school but didn't get picked up her first two years. On her third year, and she actually went to the Naval Reserve, did some time there and went to UTEP, did very good, had a great GPA, and got picked up uh, her third year for the Naval Academy and got picked up for this last class. So again, don't give up. Or as Lieutenant uh, indicated, there's other options. If the Academy isn't for you, and let's say that you don't get picked, you have Air Force ROTC scholarships. You can attend Air Force ROTC and not even be in the program until the last two years when you have an actual commitment and you can get a scholarship while you're in college as well. Finally, if you decide to go to college and graduate after those four or five years, each of the services have what's called an officer candidate or an officer training program. There's other ways to do this. Obviously our objective here is to get you a nomination and to get you into one of the academies, but if it doesn't happen, do not give up, don't get, quit trying and know that there are other options out there for you. And that's pretty much all I have to have. And again, thank you for everyone for attending. Thanks to all the presenters. And uh, Jesse, back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we are on the hour. So I'm going to very quickly go through my uh, brief for our office. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. And if someone can give me a thumbs up that they could see it. OK, thanks. Um, so again, thank you so much to all the panelists for being here today, for, uh, to all the attendees that are here. Thank you so much for being active in the chat and asking questions. Um, I encourage you to continue to ask these questions as I go through uh, my slides here. Um, so again, I am a district representative for the Office of Congresswoman Escobar. I help facilitate the congressional nominations. Uh, right there is all my information. Please feel free to email me. If you have any questions, if you um, need to get connected to somebody, just please um, reach out to me and I am more than happy um, to help answer your questions and get you the information that you need. Um, so as you heard, we uh, here are the uh, websites for the academies that we have on here. Um, I believe it was Colonel Campos who just said the Coast Guard does not require a nomination. Um, so they are not listed on here. Um, they're, they're there, but they're not um, on the panelists. So for our office, 
we, uh, these are our requirements. You must be a US citizen between the ages of 17 and 22. Um, on here, we have 25 year, year old for uh, the Merchant Marine Academy, but I heard in your brief, it's 24. Um, unmarried, not pregnant without legal, legal obligation, um, your academic preparation and uh, leadership and athletics or extracurricular activities, those things you can all really present them in your application on our website when we ask questions on the application as far as what you're doing, what extracurricular activities, that is your time to really um, hone in on, on what you're doing in, in your school currently. And then as well as um, what each academy has said is your physical health and your uh, mental health is very important. Your uh, a medical examination and um, you have to pass the aptitude examination. So for our office, um, we require that you fill out the nomination application on our website, your official high school transcript. Now those can be emailed to me or uh, from your school, or you can send them in um, to, to our office. And we have two signed recommendation letters. So these letters have to be from someone who is not related to you. And um, if you do email them to me as a student, um, we ask that they be in a PDF format. If they're from a teacher themselves, then they can be in a Word document. But if you, the student, are sending me a letter of recommendation from your high school counselor, it has to be in a PDF format. Or same thing as your transcript, you can go ahead and send them to our office um, as well. But now please remember that just because you do the nomination application through our website, that does not mean that you completed the application for the Service Academy. You have to do both. And um, so these are kind of like the things that are happening um, at the same time. For our office, the deadline for nominations is December 16th, um, 11.59 uh, p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and then in January, the Congresswoman will um, notify the nominees. And at the same time, as I mentioned, students have to submit the application for the academies. And uh, service academies do begin application reviews as early as August, and they have deadlines in January and in February. And so the nomination method for our office, the way it goes is we have a principal and then we have unranked. And we have, we provide 10 nominees per slot to each academy. Now, if you're a principal nominee and you are appointed, you will get you will get that appointment if you're a principal nominee. If let's say the principal nominee doesn't meet one of the qualifications of the um, the academy has to offer, then the other nine will be looked at. So there are other nomination sources. So we do recommend that you do reach out and try to get. Um, other nominations, as you know, it's not guaranteed that we can provide the nomination. It's very competitive. Um, so here are the places that you can get a nomination from your senators, or excuse me, the two US senators, president of the United States. They're usually children of career military personnel, deceased, so like uh, Gold Star families, um, Medal of Honor recipients, um, or the vice president who nominates five individuals from the United States, from across the United States, or any uh, secretary of the Army, Navy, or the Air Force. Um, and then as, as I mentioned, the Coast Guard does not need a nomination and the Merchant Marine Academy um, accepts nominations from congressional offices. And so that is, I know that I kind of ran through it quickly, um, but I am here for any questions that you may have. I recommend that students, you take a screenshot of this um, slide here because that is our address. That is um, my personal email address or my work email address and um, a phone number to where you can reach me. Again, I do encourage you to email me after this, letting me know that you are interested, what academy you're interested in, and to continue to um, go on our website, apply, send in your, your documents as, as soon as possible, and then continue to apply to um, the other academies. And also, I just do want to make note that um, I would love to speak to your parents. Absolutely let your parents um, contact me, and I will be more than happy to answer their questions. But um, 
we would really love to see um, individuality or excuse me, independence um, from the students. So make sure that you are being independent and that you do check up on your own application. You do make sure that you are checking your own boxes, um, you know, because obviously being in the military, you're independent, you are, you know, you're an adult, you're, you're um, in, in very prestigious, um, academy. So we want to make sure that you are, we are preparing you and that is something that can prepare you is by you being the one checking up on the status of your application, by you emailing me, emailing um, admissions offices, just making sure where your application is at. Okay. And um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and look at the chat here. And if you um, want to ask a question, uh, please feel free. We're going to Wait a little bit, see if anybody has any more questions. Or if the panelists have anything else to add, please. Well, I would, I would like to remind all of the candidates that the local admissions representatives, uh, myself, Mr. Capos, Tenant Thacker, we are the the face of the academies in the Texas 16. So if you have questions, if, if we don't reach out to you and answer those ahead of time, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, and also uh, make sure you check your emails regularly. I know that is something that uh, more and more young adults are less prone to do as we use social media. But unfortunately for you guys, email is still a primary means of communication for the academies and also for the ROTC programs. I personally know several ROTC candidates, promising ones who missed the boat simply because they did not check their emails from Cadet Command. So I just admonish all the candidates out there again, get to know your local academy rep and also check your emails. Thank you. Okay. Just if I may, um, I kind of put it in the chat there, but I just want to emphasize to everybody too. I know it may seem like a lot of, like a lot of work, but I really encourage everyone who's el eligible out there to apply to all the service academies. Um, we had not we had a situation last year where we had an opening and nobody applied for. And the reason why I say that is, yeah, pe people have their preferences. I get that, but as Commander Watson kind of alluded to earlier, and like for example in the Merchant Marines, you have an opportunity to commission in another service. And that's true of all academies. It may be a little bit harder to do, but it's possible, okay? So bottom line, it's also a great way to get an education and an opportunity for a great future. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. And um, again, please- I wanted to share something before we go. Can I do it real quick? Yeah, go ahead. And, uh, the thing is, when you hear us from all academies in point, you got to keep this in mind. All the academies only have one class start a year. So it's really important that you apply to multiple academies if you have that opportunity. Why is it important? Because say, for example, for my academy, people ask, well, why would I go to a Merchant Marine Academy if I want to be a, an officer in the Army? Well, Apply to West Point if that's your first choice. However, if West Point happens to not offer you an appointment, you can still achieve your goal of becoming an Army officer by applying to the Merchant Marine Academy. So it, it's just one of those things out there because if you don't do that, then you don't get it. You're going to have to wait a whole nother year to apply. So just keep in mind, all the academies only have one class start a year. That's important because as you go through your college search, you're going to be talking to these other colleges and you got these multiple class starts, but you won't have that when it comes to the uh, academy. And if I could say one, one last thing, contrary to what Lieutenant Thacker said, the Air Force Academy is not the best academy. <laughs> history has shown, history has shown that West Point is the best academy. Actually, it's a common misconception. It's one letter off. It's USNA, not USMA is the best. Go, it's okay. Go, common mistake, go, I, I, go Army, beat, go Army, beat Navy again. I see you got it again. Oh, you Navy. Navy. Let's around. go, beat Navy. And that is, that is just right something, 
that is just something attendees you have to look forward to is military humor, military camaraderie. So um, just again, thank you so much to each and every single one of you, um, the panelists for being here. Anna, you know, she was our interpreter. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, and just uh, to all of the attendees, uh, you know, again, please send me an email after this, letting me know that you're interested so that I could direct you in the right place. Um, and we will help get, get this started and um, have a great nomination season, everybody. Thank you so much.